And now, the Collector Cade presents DVW Deadly Games Pre-Show! Oh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to DVW Deadly Games Pre-Show! We are live in Atlanta, Georgia, but I am not alone. I have with me on this panel the, the commentator of GPW, the, the general manager of Formula One. Is it Outlaw as well? Yes, it is. Yes, it the is. The general manager of both GPW Formula One and Outlaw, Will Bryce. How are you doing tonight, Will? What is going on, everybody? It is your host, your guest commentator, and as already announced, your GPW general manager of Formula One and Outlaw, Will Bryce. And I am doing great, sir. You're clearly doing amazing as well. Of course I am! I'm always doing good! It's DVW Deadly Games! And I'm excited! Are you excited? Oh, I'm excited. This is a first of its kind that I've seen anywhere at all, and I can't wait to see what's going to go down. Well, let's get right into what we can expect at DVW Deadly Games. We're going to start talking about the women's Deadly Games match. Now, this match has come to be due to the current DVW Women's Hardcore Champion Rachel Quinn showing absolute ruthlessness to her competition. But ever since the DVW Women's Hardcore Champion got introduced in the first place, she has been an absolute tear. Using her strays of the shadow to, to, to destroy the hardcore division as we know it. Yes, she has. Yes, she has. Like, and right now, as you can say, the chickens have finally come to roost. Uh, don't get me wrong. Always do what you got to do to make sure you become champion and stay champion. But this might be one fight she might regret starting. Yeah, the four confirmed entrants so far being Amber Young, Roxanne Dean, Jane Voorhees, and Trixie Decker. Now, I'd love to talk about any of these other participants, but let's talk about Trixie Decker. She, as we know, is in a personal relationship with Rachel Quinn. This, this, this is not this is not any a part of anything. They are actually a relationship, and it seems like that has affected Trixie in the ring. She is. It seems like she's holding back on Rachel Quinn whenever she's in the ring with her. She straight up no-showed a four-on-three handicap match between the four confirmed participants in the Women's Deadly Games against the Strays of the Shadow. Now, what do you think is going to happen with Trixie Decker knowing all this information? Uh, I really don't know. All's fair in love and war, but like what she needs to do is get her head in the game. The like the women in this match are not going to take lightly for her. They're not going to respect her feelings in the matter. And the fact that she's even thinking so hard and holding her back so much for a hardcore title is just, is just sad. Truly. <laughs> in my opinion, yeah. like, why are you even here? If that's, what's, if you're going to let that happen, she could be here. Being a new a, a new recruit of the Strays of the Shadow. Again, not only is Trixie Decker in a relationship with Rachel Quinn, but also Noah Liger of the Strays of the Shadow. There's there's a personal feeling towards a lot of the members in that group. So what side is Trixie on going into this match? We're going to have to find out later tonight. But speaking of women's titles, the women's world champion is on the line in almost such as a brutal match as the women's deadly games as Lulu Bates challenges the matriarch Maria Wolf in a first blood match, uh, possibly a first in in this illustrious business. Um, what do you what do you think about this match between Lulu and Maria? Well, uh, well, I mean, with when it comes to Lulu, I, I respect the fact that she chose to not go with her strengths, but to go against, I guess, Maria's strengths. In a sense, like saying I can go up into your yard and take it over. I don't think that's what's going to happen. You've seen what happens when Maria gets mad, and if you're going to try to make her bleed, that's just going to make things worse. Definitely is. The Matriarch has been an absolute tear for months now. Ever since winning a the Second City Dojo War Maidens champion, it's just once she held that belt out, 
high. She has been nothing but dominant. So Lulu has quite the challenge ahead of her. But moving towards that, we're going to go on to another truly brutal match for the DVW I Am The Table champion as Dante X and Extreme Ortiz go head to head in a match that the champion has picked and it is a flaming tables match. Whoever loses this match not only is not walking out with that splintered title but is going home with burn marks with on fire. What do you think about this match, Will, between the vicious Dante Hex and the champion Extreme Ortiz? I, I don't even think it comes down to anything about who's vicious, who's stronger, who's better. It's just the fact that you have to be smart about this. You're about to burn your skin. That's not going to that's not going to change. That's not going to go away anytime soon. So you need to be prepared mentally, physically, emotionally, because fire is what's real. It definitely is, but I don't know if Dante Hex knows anything about emotions. He's just a monster, as we've seen these past few weeks. Ever since that he is. ever since debuting, just destroying people like Radio Rex, destroying people in our tables division, and has has put the champion on notice. But the champion is not backing down. It's gonna be an interesting match. But speaking of the tables title, there we are we are we are planning way in ahead by by implementing a best of seven tables match. This was confirmed on Twitter. Alistair put out the challenge to Mads Murray, and we now have match number one of the best of seven tables match to go to right now. Thank you, Tone. Hello, everyone. My name is Devante Sewell. I am your commentator here on the pre-show of Deadly Games coming from All-Star Wrestling. And I cannot wait to call the action that we're going to be seeing here tonight. And we're going to be starting things off with the first of the best of seven tables matches between Alistair and Maz Morty. And this is going to be a very interesting one. The winner of this best of seven will walk away with an opportunity at the DVW I Am The Table Championship at our season finale. Oh, this is definitely going to be a hard-hitting one. Tables matches, you don't have to win. You don't win by submission. You don't win by pinfall. You got to put someone through a table. Of course, your opponent is not just going to let you do it, so you're going to have to battle for that one. As now, here comes the Scottish psychopath, Maz Morty, making his way to the ring. I cannot wait to see how this match goes. Maz Morty, this man looks like he's got a few screws loose, and that might help him in this kind of a... Uh, match set up here with no rules besides just putting your opponent through a table you're allowed to do whatever you want and that might uh give him a bit of an advantage he might excel in this type of chaotic environment but we'll see if uh you know if he gets he can keep his focus because in the end of the day you you can do whatever you want to your opponent but you still got to put him through a table and we'll see how this match goes. I'm very interested to see what these guys are going to bring. Talk about a way to open up the this, this amazing show here, Deadly Games. As the bell is rung and Maz going right in, wasting no time, getting right on top of Alistair. This man definitely is ready for a fight, and he connects with that neck breaker. He is just was waiting for that bell to ring. As uh, though trying to turn things back around, trying does not want Maz to dictate the pace of the match. And he's just stomping away. As look like he might have a bit of a strength advantage on. Uh, I mean, Alistair might look like he had a bit of a strength advantage. On Maz, that might help him in this kind of match tie. We'll see if that play if that might play a factor. Let's look at that 
big right to the midsection there, and then try to go for the elbow, but that got countered. Oh, now both men throwing some strikes. Who's going to get the best of it? Looks like Alistair. He ducks under and drops down Maz with that spinning being slam. That's going to confuse him a little bit. All that spinning he just did as he gets his arm just driven, his arm and shoulder driven into the mat. He's not really trying to grab the boot, but the draw toe hold. And now they're looking to do some damage to the legs here. Got the cloak, like a versus a clover leaf, and just snaps back. That's going to do some damage there. She just beats him into the corner. Maz. Sends him into the corner, four onto the face, setting him up, and what a larry to the back of the neck. These guys are just throwing everything they got at each other. So far, no man going to go for the tables yet. They're just looking to put the other down. Maybe so they can get that moment and connects with the Insiguri. But it doesn't keep Maz down for long as he gets him down with the arm drag. Catches him, puts him over the big knee strike right to the face. And that could have cut, that might keep him down for a whole while. You know, he's already getting back up as Maz looking to be the first to get the table. Giving it right to Alistair, and he tried to pick it up, but Maz is like, no, you're not going to do that. You know, setting him up. What is this? Oh, what a power bomb! Drive in the back. And now I'm gonna look. Alistair looking to trying to end this match as quickly as possible, setting that table up. If he can get him set up on this table, it could end right here. Will he put him through it? No, just beating the face right into the mat. Now might be trying to go for it now, but no, got it reversed into a scorpion death drop there. Uh, what is Maz looking for? Maz with the, using the table as a weapon. Not going to put someone through it, but it's definitely going to do some damage. But Alistair with a counter, but he gets countered. With that version of a jumping complete shot. Maz calling to get back into the ring, but he gets just driven down in a tactical way. Definitely seems like Alistair has a game plan looking to end this as fast as possible. Doesn't want to be in this match longer than he needs to as he goozles Maz and just drives him into the mat. There's that power I was talking about. I looked like he might have a bit of a power advantage and I might just saw the back of the head just snapping onto the mat. You know, setting him up only. Tries to grab a hold of him with a kick in the midsection, stunning him just momentarily. Will he try to put him to the table this time? Alistair setting him up. Oh, he's got him with the pump handles. Through the table. And Alistair able to pick up the first win in the best of seven. Congratulations to Alistair there. I, was, I did mention, I was wondering if uh, Maz was going to be able to stay focused. And be able to actually go for, you know, the win of the match. But instead of trying to get Alistair to the table, he unset it up and tried to use it as a weapon. Maybe a little too unstable for a match stuff like this. But there you have it, Alistair. Immediately ending this match. Gets the first win. Congratulations. Can't wait to see where the rest of this best of seven goes. As uh, we'll be moving on to our next match. Back to you, Tony. Well, the first point in this best of seven series looks like it goes to the mad one from Scotland, Mads Murray. But moving on, match. it was such a match, such insane brutality that you can only get here in DVW. But moving on from tables to ladders, we have a historic triangle ladder match. Three teams will be trying to climb a ladder to become DVW World Tag Team Champions. WMD, the Horseman, and Charm Z, the Horseman, currently walking in to Deadly Games as Tag Team Champions. And what do you think about this match? 
Uh, this is going to be interesting. Anytime tag titles are in a ladder match, you know it's going to be good. With three teams that that know each other well, they fought each other all over the place, and this is just going to be another instance of that. Of course it is, but unfortunately, I have some... I have, there are some rumors circulating that the horsemen haven't arrived yet to the building. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what we're going to do if the horsemen don't make it here tonight. Let's hope for the best. Moving on from a three team tag team match to a three way dance for the DVW Legacy Champion. Now, this is going to be a first here in DVW because this match is going to be one. Ball to a finish as Chase Owens, Crimson, and Siler Jordan face off. Now, what do you think about this match, Will Bryce? Uh, whether it is uh, uh, elimination or one fall to a finish, at the end of the day, I'm going with Siler Jordan. He is he's he's too tough, man. He is uh, on a different level than a lot of people here. Not to discredit his challengers, but like. As, as, as scary as it is that you can lose your title uh, without even getting pinned yourself, I'm sure Siler Jordan has this in the bag. Yes, that is true. Siler, with it being one fall to a finish, Siler does not need to get pinned in order to lose his title. So not only that, but we also have Crimson in this match. Siler has never been able to defeat Crimson. He has never pinned him, never submitted him. Do you think that plays a factor in the match tonight? It, it could potentially uh, play a factor. Uh, hopefully, Siler doesn't have that be his main focus because that could cost him the win. It could cost him everything. But speaking of everything, we are going to be moving on to another historic six-man tag team match where not only one set of titles will be on the line, but two Sets of titles will be on the line as the DVW Next Gen and U.S. Tag Titles are on the line as Airstrike. Sean and Gabriel Kenneth, the current DVW United States Tag Team Champions, will be putting their titles on the line as Dakota Enfield will be challenging for the DVW Next Gen title. And the Blade Runners and ZK have been forming this alliance that has brought them to the dance here tonight. The Blade Runners looking to get back what they brought into the company in the first place. The DVW United States Tag Team Champions and ZK is looking to successfully defend his newly won DVW Next Gen Champion. And what do you think about this match? Well, Bryce, this seems like quite an exciting match. Oh, this is very exciting to walk out of a match with two sets of titles is something that doesn't happen that often. And when, when that becomes like when it's laid at your feet, you've got to do whatever it takes to take that. And for this one, all six men, they need to stay focused. They need to have a game plan and because that's the only way you're going to win this and make history in a sense. It definitely is. We are definitely going to be making history tonight here at DVW Deadly Games as no matter which team wins, we will be crowning new champions as both belts are on separate teams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be interesting. Like I can't wait to see it. I'm definitely excited for it as well, but we are going to move on to the a match that's going to be crowning a number one contender for the DVW Next Gen title, where the and we'll be going on to 4DX to be challenging for that title as we have a three-way dance between Jason Ramirez, Christian Shirley, and Yasuhiro Motada to go to right now. Let's send it down to Devante. Thank you, Tony, and we're going to get back into the action here on the pre-show of Deadly Games. Here we go, as we're going to be starting off with this triple threat action, knockout only, it's elimination style, winner is the last person standing, and here comes, comes Yashahiro Momoto, a KO artist, if you ever seen one, this man uh, his matches have been lasting a little longer than a minute. This man doesn't get paid by the hour. He's looking to end things off with a single kick. Because that's all he needs. Man, is probably the most dangerous his competitor you could end up getting going up against. 
as he has just been destroying everyone he comes up across from what I've been hearing. You definitely got to think this match will very much go into his favor. We'll see how his opponents will uh, look to handle Yajahiro as... Here comes the first, the second man of this triple threat match, Jason Ramirez. And Jason Ramirez, I am very familiar with. I've called his matches over at All Star Wrestling. He is quite the competitor. No nonsense. He wants to get the job done. He wants to be at the top. Uh, and he has, and I, he's had some great battles, some quick ones too. Uh, I've actually known for him to had some quicker matches back uh, back in uh, All Star Wrestling. So we'll see how he handles that here. Uh, maybe you know a match like this could benefit him, but we'll see. As Mira's not taking a. Uh, you know, not being quick about his entrance, you know, he's taking time, maybe trying to just maybe, you know, using the extra time in his entrance, get more of a game plan, trying to think what he's going to have to do to deal with Yashiro Momoto. It might benefit him to uh, maybe even work with, their third, with the third person of this match. Might as well call this a handicap match. If, if in my opinion, call this a handicap match because I'm working with the third, I'm working with the other guy. They go up against Yazahiro. As speaking of the third man of this three-way match, here comes Christian Shelley. Christian Shelley definitely looks ready, looks pumped to try and get a victory here tonight in this triple threat elimination KO match. As Shelly trying to psych himself up, he knows he's about to go into a quite, very much in a, a dangerous match. We'll see how this is handled. Again, if I was Shelly, I would definitely be thinking about teaming up with Ramirez, as it could definitely assist him. We'll see though how he will handle this. And he definitely seems to be trying to get the fans behind him, trying to you know, gain their energy, and he might need every bit of it as we get ready for this match. As here we go, the ref rings the bell. Jason, and oh my gosh, he's trying to go right after that's a hero, and he's out, ref called it, he's eliminated, Shelly, he, Christian trying to hype himself up, trying to use the ref for a blind spot, but it doesn't work as he's taken down, ref's called it, and Yasha Hero Momoto just won in a flash. All it took was, well I guess technically two, but only took one each, and this man is dominant. I don't think there's anyone that could stop him. I don't think there's anyone who can stand the kick. Well, thank you, and we will see you. Uh, thank you for uh, seeing this pre-show. What great matches. Back to you, Tony. What? Oh, 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 wow. <laughs> I was not expecting being back so soon. Yasuhiro just kicking the head of both of his opponents right away, knocking them clean out. Yeah. Dang. Wow. Oh, man. I feel oh, bad for... Really oh, I feel bad for whoever's going to be the next-gen champion going into DVW4DX. Oh, I feel bad for the doctor who has to look at those guys. Oh, man. <laughs> Jason Ramirez being a repeat victim now, too. That's not the oh. first time he's had his head kicked off by Yasuhiro. Hey, sometimes you just got to go back to the drawing board. Try again. 
Well, going from one knockout match to a set of knockouts challenging for the DVW Women's Tag Team titles as Carolyn Swift and Emily Gray face off against the current DVW Women's Tag Team Champions, the Wolves of Prey. Now, this came about due to Carolyn Swift and Emily Gray actually defeating the Wolves of Prey by submission. And due to Lulu Base defeating Devin Wolf, Lulu got, gave the opportunity to Carolyn and Emily to pick the match type. And what they chose was a tornado tag submission match. And that put the that puts the Wolves of Prey at a significant disadvantage. But they yes, don't seem does. phased. That they do not seem phased whatsoever. But what are your thoughts going into this match, Will Bryce? Well, if I don't know if it don't seem phased or they just may be stupid. Uh, they're going against two people from Chicago and a lot. And as we know, the women in the wrestling business from Chicago, they know how to bring you down to the mat and make you cry and scream until you until they choose to stop. I mean, look at Roxanne. They like, look at the beating she took from the, uh, the wolves, of, the wolves mother. Like, that this is, is a true. different kind of fight. Like, so to not seem worried or at least concerned, I, I think is is very foolish. Well, you could see it as foolish. Um, I see it as over. I see it as overconfidence on the Wolves of Praise part. They have shown that any, any challenge that have been put ahead of them in any company whatsoever has just been knocked right out of the park. So, but will Very that cool. will the same be told tonight in this match against the Second City Knockouts? Who knows? I, I I truly think the Second City Knockouts. This is their wheelhouse. Like submission. That's mat wrestling. That's fundamentals. That's skill more than power. And if you can wrap someone in a pretzel to where they can't get out, it's over. Well, speaking of dominant champions, one of the most dominant champions we've ever had here in DVW, Max Maximus and his historic DVW Undisputed United States Championship run could be in jeopardy as he takes on the big-time drunk himself, Matt Rush. Now, it seems like Matt Max doesn't really care for this match as he was promised a match against the boss, Riley Wolf, but Due to Riley having a lot of personal issues, his son, his third son being born just mere weeks ago, he is not looking to to risk his own health and safety to take that title away from Max Maximus. So he put Matt Rush in charge of finally getting it done here tonight. What do you think about this match, Will Bryce? So you chose a drunk, really. You chose you chose a drunk. Okay, like it, this is Max Maximus we're talking about. You, if you're gonna send someone in to fight on your behalf, you don't send in a drunk. You send in you send in someone like Siler. You send in someone like Kyle or Lance. No, you send in Matt Rush. Really, really. Okay, uh, like uh, Max is winning. Max is winning. Max is winning. I, there's there's nothing more I need to say about that. Just real Matt Rush. Okay. Okay. Now I got an interesting question for you. Originally, this match was advertised as Riley Wolf versus Max Maximus. What do you think that mm -hmm. match would have looked like if we were to see it tonight? Though unfortunately we're not. It, it's something it's actually something I was looking forward to. This is it's it would have actually been very interesting. Uh both Max and Riley are very similar in their style. Uh, they're, they're both very strong, but they're also very agile at the same time. It, it would have been very nice to see almost two mirrors fighting each other. It, it would have, it would have been very fascinating, but uh, you know, like sometimes, yeah, family comes first. Uh, but you know, you make such a, such a fervor to try to, take down max and then you walk away because it sounds like you're scared 
I don't know what that could be out of Riley Wolf. It could be fear, but it couldn't. It may not be fear, Max. We don't know truly what is happening with the boss right now. But you mentioned Kyle and Lance, and they are going to be in one of our main events of the evening for the DVW World Heavyweight Champion, Kyle Young, the King of the Hill, winning this title opportunity back in January at the King of the Hill pay-per-view in a 30-man battle royal. He survived it all and persevered, and now he's looking to take his spot Firmly as the face of DVW, but in his way is a man that's been here since day one, has been in the top since day one, and has put hit this company on his back since day one. So Kyle Young has to do go through hell and back to prove that he has what it takes to be the face of DVW. Now, what do you think of this match, Will Bryce, between these two titans of DVW? Kyle Young, you may be the king of the hill, but you're about to meet the emperor of the mountain. This is this is Lance Romance here. This he is a whole different kind of beast. I don't know what plan Kyle has up his sleeve, but it better be the best plan he has ever thought of in his life if he thinks he can take that title away from Lance Romance cuz I don't I don't see it happening. But I know it's going to be one of the best matches we've ever seen. It definitely is. This is Kyle Young's personal battle of Shiriyama. But we have to wait and see how that battle will take place. But we have one more match to talk about. And actually, it has world title implication as the men's Deadly Games match. The winner of that will be going on to our season finale banquet to challenge for that very same world title that Lance and Kyle are fighting for in one of our main events. And it is a stacked card. It is a stacked set of people being Cody Hagen, Leon Young, Devlin, Tawatoa, Eli Robledo, and the wicked one, Eric DeVille. All men besides Eric earned this opportunity in a submissions qualifier due to the fact that the Deadly Games can only be won via submission. Now, who do you got in this Deadly Games? I think we all have someone different to pick. Ah. Uh. Uh, truly, uh, with this type of match, I'm going with Eric, weirdly enough. Now, uh, uh, I don't uh, know if he should have gotten in without having a qualifying match, but you don't mess with crazy. And Eric has shown how crazy he can truly be, how nothing can truly stop him anymore. I mean, you might outsmart him, you might you know, get one over on him, but you're not going to outfight him. And who knows what's going to happen when you're locked. We already saw what happens when you're locked inside of his uh, structure of his own making. Now he has to torque you to get out. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Speaking of that Evernight Citadel, according to the boss, Rodley Wolf, due to Eric's victory in that Evernight Citadel, he granted him the first spot in this Deadly Games. So again, mm -hmm. Eric has experience in such structures as these. That he does, that he does. And when it comes to his other opponents, these are people I'm sure he he has faced before. I know Cody has been in situations like this. Uh, who knows if he has a submission move in his repertoire that will that'll work. He he works more power than anything else, so it's going to be interesting to see if he has anything up his sleeve for that. Well, there are such pe there are such power guys that have entered submissions into their arsenal, such as Lex Luger with the torture rack. Could we be seeing a torture mm -hmm. rack from Cody Hagen? That that is definitely possible. You know, it, it does help in the power department. Just stretching out the body, you know, it could be very helpful. Definitely so, but they're not, not only is that championship opportunity hanging over their heads, one thing to look towards, but you also have a personal vendetta against Leon Young and Devlin. This has been spanning over a few months now, as Devlin, along with Corey Quinn, naming themselves the likely lads, have been getting under Leon's skin in all types of ways, Challenge costing Leon an exhibition match when they were merely freelance talent in the DVWI. Beating Leon and his father Kyle at 
DVW World of Tomorrow, and Devlin the entire time just being an absolute, uh, for lack of a better word, sleazeball, and hitting on Leon's twin sister, Jade. <laughs> Hey, uh, shoot your shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, Devlin is a man who's going to talk his game. And luckily for him so far, he's backed it up. Uh, but now you're stuck inside. <laughs> you're stuck inside uh, to steal with a man that hates your guts. And anything goes. So, hope you're ready for the consequences. Along with these men... Such men as our inaugural DVW World Heavyweight Champion Eli Robledo and the uh, a member of the Islanders, Tawa Toa, have also qualified. Don't overlook them. They are going to be quite the factor in this match as well. Mm -hmm. I think we already talked about predictions. I think we are almost out of time. So, um, just final thoughts on DVW Deadly Games in general. Get ready for a wild ride. The dead are coming alive. Have a good time. Couldn't have said it any better myself. Um, if you look in the live chat right now, there should be a link to DVW Deadly Games. Make sure to click on that link. Set that reminder. Click that like button. Make sure to let the, that the mods know that you are in the chat and you are ready for DVW Deadly Games. Grab everyone in the back and